Hi, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll demonstrate a tutorial on creating a Modbus TCP server on the WT32 ETH01 board using Ethernet connection. Let's get started. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on any future videos. Thank you. In this video, I'm using the WT32 ETH01 as a Modbus TCP server. Within this Modbus setup, I've created four coil registers. The state of these coil registers will control relays connected to GPIO pins on the board. Since the WT32 ETH01 board features an embedded Ethernet port, I'm using an Ethernet cable to connect the board to the local network. On a computer connected to the network, I'm using Node-RED as a Modbus TCP client, which will connect to the Modbus TCP server to control the coil registers. Since this computer is also connected to the Wi-Fi network, I can access the Node-RED dashboard from my smartphone. This allows me to indirectly control the relays on the Modbus TCP server through my smartphone. These are the components required for this experiment. The WT32 ETH01 board is the Modbus TCP server. Additionally, we have a four-channel relay that will be connected to GPIO pins on the board, used to switch on according to the status of the coil registers. For uploading code to the board, I'm using a TTL to USB converter commonly used for uploading code to ESP01 boards. Other components include jumper cables, an Ethernet cable, and a micro USB adapter to power the board. These are the libraries used in this project. Open the library manager and search for Arduino Modbus. Once found, click install to install the library. This library is used to configure the board as a Modbus TCP server. The next library is the web server WT32 ETH01 library. This is used to enable communication to the network via the Ethernet port, allowing the board to connect to the network. This is the Arduino code used in this project. Don't forget to edit the board's IP address according to the configuration of your local network. In this example, the board's IP address is set to 192.168.0.212. Additionally, these are the PO pins used to control the relays, consisting of four pins. Please download the files used in this project from the link provided in the video description. The next step is to upload the code to the board. For a clearer tutorial on how to upload code from the Arduino IDE to the WT32 ETH01 board, please watch my previous video. Don't forget to select the correct board and port. After the upload process, and the board has been connected to the micro USB power adapter, and the Ethernet cable is plugged from the board to the computer. Next, let's check the connection to see if the board has successfully connected to the network with the configured IP address using the ping command in the command prompt. We can see that the board is successfully connected to the network. Next, we can establish a connection to this board as a Modbus TCP client. Here is the node read flow code for the Modbus TCP client. First, the Modbus read node will read the coil values on the Modbus TCP server. Make sure the IP address of server matches the one set on the board. Next, the readings of the coils will be stored in flow variables, specifically for relay 1 to relay 4. These variables will be used in other nodes to determine the current status of each relay. Here is a switch node to check the coil status for relay 1 or the coil with address 0, whether it is true or false. If the value is true, it will send a payload of background green. If the value is false, it will send a payload of background gray. 
This is to change the background color of the button node. This is the button node used to control the relay. The payload sent is the flow variable relay one. It will then be sent to the switch node to check if the current status is true or false. If the relay status is false, the next step is to send a payload of true to the Modbus to turn on the relay. Conversely, if the current status is true, it will send a payload of false to the Modbus to turn off the relay. This is the Modbus node that will perform a write to the coil according to the received payload. Since this is for relay number 1, the coil address is 0. Perform the same process to control the other relays. Just change the value of the flow variable in the button node and also the address in the Modbus write node accordingly. And here is the dashboard view. There are four buttons for relays 1 to 4. If the current condition of the relay is off, pressing the button will turn on the relay, and vice versa. Now, let's try accessing the node red dashboard from the smartphone and control the relays from there. In conclusion, in this video, we demonstrated how to set up a Modbus TCP server using the WT32 ETH01 board and control relays through a node red dashboard as Modbus TCP client. By connecting the board to the local network using Ethernet connection, and accessing the dashboard from a smartphone, we could easily control the relays remotely. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.